What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we've got a new level 6 Digimon to talk about. That's coming in Union Impact. That is the next expansion. And I'm really, really excited about Mastermon. Like, properly excited. See, I didn't even say the word properly right. That is how excited I am. And what we've got here is a Digimon that, on the face of it, the stats are fine, but nothing particularly exciting. We've got a 12 cost to play normally, which is honestly about what we would expect for a level 6. Some of them do get up to 13, but 12 is about the higher end usually. We've got a 4 cost to evolve, which is actually pretty high. Not unforeseen. Shine Greymon, for instance, costs 4 to evolve. That's relevant. We'll get there in a minute because it's yellow. Generally speaking, level 6 is we usually pay 3 to evolve, but we've, we've seen 4. Although it can evolve from both purple and and yellow and we're gonna see more and more of this as it goes along this is this is basically what's going on at the moment with digimon we've set free this is one of the things we're gonna see an increase and we knew this was coming incidentally we, we were told this right off the bat one of the things we are gonna get in this set is a greater number of digimon that can evolve from multiple different colors so, I know we've already seen a couple, and we haven't really looked at much of the set at all. This is something you should expect to carry on as we go forward. And the 12,000 power is... I think it's moderately high. 12,000 power is on the higher end of what we usually expect from a level 6. And honestly, I mean, especially if you look at, like, ultimate power, the vast majority of level 6s don't get up this high. So we've got a moderately expensive, but moderately powerful level 6. But here's what I really love about Mastermon. And I should give a shout out to DigimonCard.dev for the translations. What we've got here is a skill whereby when you Digivolve, you discard one security of both players from the top. And then you may play one level 4 or less yellow or purple Digimon from your trash without paying its cost. Now, the first part of this is the one that really intrigues me as a gameplay mechanic. Because essentially, both players start with five security. And when all the security has gone away and the other player attacks, that player wins the game. So here, I mean, if your opponent's got three security remaining and you've got one, and you evolve into Mastermon here, now, as always, and I do think this needs to be said very, very clearly, the translation team that have been doing these translations, and there is a team of them working over Discord, Facebook group, etc., who are doing an absolutely wonderful, brilliant, phenomenal job in dealing with these translations and translating from Japanese to English. They are doing a great job. But we are still working with fan translations of Japanese cards. Please always bear that in mind when we're talking about these new cards. But the translation we've got at the moment doesn't make it an optional. It makes it a must. You have to discard one security of both players from the top. And then you may play one level four or less yellow or purple Digimon from your trash without paying its cost. So if you've only got one security left and then you play Mastermon, and then on your opponent's turn they might only have one Digimon with which to attack, but it doesn't matter because they attack and win the game. This can backfire. Although if you just hard cast it, as people say, if you play it normally without evolving it, pay in the 12 memory, this will obviously not work. For newer players, this is a question that comes up a lot. Do remember that there is a difference between playing and evolving. And this skill specifically is a when you play, not a when you evolve. So that's kind of brilliant and awesome, if played properly. Because what if it's the other way around? What if your opponent's got one security remaining and you've got three? You drop this, you take off their last security, and the thing is, this is discarding a security. This isn't performing an attack to take away a security, in which case your opponent can drop a blocker. No, that's not what's happening here. Your opponent doesn't base and again there might be some mechanic in the future that changes this statement but as it stands at the moment this is kind of unavoidable and then you attack so let's say your opponent's got one security you've got two attackers your opponent's got one blocker 
Well, generally speaking, you go to attack, your opponent blocks, you attack a second time, your opponent is not able to block, you take out the last security, but you're unable to attack and win the game. But now, you take out their last security, you need to attack once unblocked to win the game, you've got two Digimon with which to attack, they've got one blocker, I don't know, Woodmon is the example we've had up on the screen, and all of a sudden they cannot stop you winning. That is what I love about, well, no, that's a lie, one of the things I love about Mastermon. This is one of those ones that can absolutely backfire and you've got to be super careful. But if you play this right and you time it correctly, this can be absolutely phenomenal. And that's before we get to the second part of the skill. Now, we need to make a little bit of a differentiation here. Because we've seen stuff like this with Piedmon, for instance, back in Ultimate Power. When you play Piedmon, and that is playing on Evolve, you may play up to two level four or less purple Digimon from the trash without paying their cost. Digimon played by this effect do not activate their when played effects. So Piedmon very specifically says you don't get any play effects when you play them. Which honestly wasn't a huge deal for purple Digimon. Because you're looking at kind of Impmon that mills two when destroyed. And Tapermon which draws one when destroyed. But they're not play abilities. I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong about this. I don't think in Ultimate Power we even had any purple Digimon of level four or below with play abilities anyway so it didn't matter but here it is purple or yellow and you do get the play abilities and I cannot be the only one who saw this and went hey promo patamon the, the patamon from the original promo pack the one that's being given away in the sweepstakes and at local game stores etc because this is a level 3 yellow Digimon, i.e. level 4 or below, and it's got a play skill where if your security is 1 or less, you recover 1. So remember how I said you were dropping one of your security and one of your opponents? Well, if you choose to go and get Patamon back here, you're not. Also worth pointing out, if you've got zero security, essentially what will happen is, you'll drop one of your opponent's security, you'll go to drop one of yours, you can't. No, it does not lose you the game. Dropping a security and being attacked with no security are not the same thing. It's the same way if you've got more security attacks than your opponent has security cards, you don't win the game. So you've got no security, you don't drop one, and then you get your Padamon back, and actually you end the turn with more security cards than you had when you started. And this is just one example, right? There are, I mean, I said there weren't any purple Digimon with play skills, but there are yellow Digimon that have play skills. How about the Gatamon from Ultimate Power, where if you have a purple Digimon when you play it, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 4,000 power. And hopefully that will then destroy one of their Digimon. And bearing in mind, you will have a purple Digimon. Because Mastermon is a purple Digimon. Oh. Well, look how that worked out, ladies and gentlemen. Look how that worked out. This has the potential to be an absolutely phenomenal card that just swings games this could be an absolutely phenomenal card doesn't have to be you got to play it right it could be that you don't get to play any digimon and you just wreck one of your own security and that's a bad thing but there are so many cool things you can do with this card and while we're here i do want to have a quick chat about shakomon as well here because we've got a bunch of cards to talk about and I've been kind of ill, so I've... Let's just say I'm usually going to be slightly more on the ball. You have my apologies. But Shakamon here, what we've got is a yellow Digimon, 8 cost to play normally, 3 cost to evolve from a couple different colours. And then what we've got is 7,000 power. But on your turn, this card is also treated as a blue Digimon. So you'll notice there that I did... I didn't actually say what colours it evolved from. Sorry about that. It's yellow and blue. So it can evolve from blue, and it is also a blue Digimon on your turn. Remember, that could be incredibly relevant, because if it's the only Digimon you've got out, but you really want to play Hammer Spark, well, you've got to have a blue Digimon or Tamer in play to play a blue option card. Oh, look, this will do the trick very nicely. 
And on your opponent's turn, all of your opponent's Digimon without Digivolution sources get security attack minus one. That is to say they'll lose a security attack. Yes, that could put them to security attack zero. So they still attack. Any skills that they would have when they attack still operate. But they don't actually get to perform any security checks because they check zero security cards and ha 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 ha. And this is kind of weird one, right? Because we've got a bunch of blue cards going right back to the starter set. We've got a bunch of blue cards to get rid of evolution sources. Gururumon and Where Gururumon, both of them took away evolution. I mean, really, removing evolution sources was the hook of the blue starter deck. And it's kind of cool here to have a yellow Digimon that takes advantage of that. And this could literally be played as a blue Digimon in a blue deck. It evolves some blue, it is a blue on your turn, etc. But then it gives you access to yellow option cards, which increases your tech ability and just kind of is a bit awesome. I mean, something like Lightning Paw, three of your opponent's level three Digimon get minus 4,000 power. That's a lovely little card, and as a security card, it does the same thing. That's a lovely little card that can basically take out three of your opponent's low-level Digimon in one go. And now you could essentially just tech that into a blue deck. I mean, honestly, this is kind of a blue Digimon. It can evolve from a blue Digimon. It's counted as a blue Digimon. The skill is very much what blue Digimon do. It's a blue skill, not a yellow skill. Really, what this Digimon does is it gives you a yellow Digimon so that you can use any of these yellow option cards without having to put any other yellow Digimon in. And that, to me, sounds kind of cool, I'll be honest with you. It doesn't excite me quite as much as Mastermon, although it is the only yellow card we've seen from Union Impact so far, so instantly the best, yay! But it is one that I think has an awful lot of potential moving forward. But that's what I think. I'd like to know what you think. Go nuts! Be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Digimon and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wasi Plays.